In this video of general biology, we would be discussing the different cell types of plants and animal tissues. So first, let's go to your plant tissues. Okay. So the plant tissues could be divided into two. We have the meristematic tissues and the permanent tissues. When we say meristematic, these are tissues composed of cells that are capable of cell division, meaning they're actively dividing. Okay. So these are also known as the undifferentiated tissue and um, we'll see, or these tissues are actually responsible for the growth of your plants, okay? So the growth of the plants, depending on its location for the tissue, so they could be the apical or lateral meristematic tissue. So for the apical meristematic tissues, um, they are responsible for the length, okay, or for the height of your plants, Okay, so it makes the plant longer. While for the lateral uh, meristematic tissues, this is, this is responsible for the growth by width or it makes the plant thicker. Okay, so the lateral meristematic tissues um, could be seen as the rings of your um, tree. Okay, so when you cut the trunk and you see the rings, it is the lateral meristematic tissues that you are seeing. Okay, now let's go to the plant, the permanent plant tissue. So these are mature cells that are already incapable of cell division. Okay, So this could be classified as simple or complex. When we say simple, they are composed of a single cell type. Well, obviously for the complex, they are composed of more than one cell type. Okay, So under the simple plant tissues, we have the epidermis. Okay, um, again, going back, so the permanent um, tissues, again, they perform a specific function. Okay, so for the epidermis, so this is the first um, example of a simple plant tissue. So the epidermis is the outermost um, layer of the plants, and they obviously have a protective role. So same with the epidermis of the plants, I mean of the animals, okay? So next, we have the parenchyma and the cholenchyma. Collectively, collectively, we call them your chlorenchyma. So the parenchyma is responsible or they are located at the stems and the roots of your plant. And their main function is for the storage of nutrients, okay? While the cholenchyma, these are found in your shoots and leaves and they are responsible for the mechanical strength and flexibility of the plant. Okay, so another simple tissue is the sclerenchyma, and this is responsible for the responsible, I'm sorry, for the mechanical strength of your plant. Okay, and they also aid in water conduction. Now let's go to the complex um, plant tissues. You commonly hear this: the xylem and the phloem. Okay, so the xylem is composed now of your xylem vessels and your tracheids. While for the phloem, you have your sieve tubes and your companion cells, okay? So the function of the xylem is basically for support, okay? So it is also responsible for the transport of water and dissolved salts from the roots to the stems and the leaves. While the phloem, it is responsible for the transport of organic nutrients produced during photosynthesis or simply your carbohydrates or your sugars okay now let's go to your animal tissues so the animal tissues are classified into four we have the epithelial tissue the muscular tissue the connective tissue and the nervous or the neural tissue okay so this diagram summarizes already the different tissues and their different um, subtypes okay so the epithelial tissue is the outermost cell layer and it also has a protective role okay and we have different types of epithelial tissue according to their cell shape, okay? So next, we have the muscular tissue. So we have different types such as striated, non-striated, and the cardiac muscle. So these are responsible for various forms of movement, okay? So for the connective tissue, so basically, they are for support and protection of organs and limbs. And we have connective tissues that are divided into three. We have the connective tissue proper, the supportive connective tissue, and we have your fluid connective tissues, okay? So lastly, we have the nervous or the neural tissue, which are responsible for carrying of electrical and chemical signals and impulses, okay? Now let's discuss the epithelial tissues, okay? So again, um, these are composed of sheets of cells connected by intracellular junctions. And as you could see in this image, you would see you now different shapes of your 
um, epithelial cells. Okay, so general function is for protection, secretion, and absorption. Okay, so for the squamous epithelial tissues, so they are simple. So this is their structure. So they are flat, almost flat. Okay, so they could be simple or they could be stratified, meaning they are um, found in layers. So you also have the cuboidal epithelial tissue. So their shape is actually by cubes. Okay. While for the columnar, they are taller than shorter. So usually this columnar um, epithelial tissues, um, they would now have cilia and microvilli. And you have now the transitional epithelial tissues, which doesn't have irregular shape. Okay. Now, uh, you may pause the video to take a screenshot or you may also search this from the internet. Okay. So this... Um, Image summarizes now their function and location of your different types of epithelial tissues. Okay, but for this video, our main focus is just to classify them according to their shape. Okay, for the function, we'll discuss them more when we go to our different organs and organ systems. Okay, now let's go to your muscle tissues. So, the muscle tissues we have three examples or three types you have the skeletal muscles. We have the cardiac muscles and the smooth muscles, okay? So the skeletal muscles, they are also, um, also known as the voluntary muscles. So they interact with the bone to bring about movement and they maintain posture. And um, kaya siya tinag na skeletal, again, it's related to a bone. Now, for the cardiac muscle, obviously, you could only find this in the heart. Okay, it's only found in the heart wall and the contraction is not under voluntary control. You could not control the beating of your heart. Okay, so last we have the smooth muscle and this is involuntary as well. So these are found in the walls of your digestive tract, the arteries and reproductive tract, the bladder and other hollow organs. Okay, so next we have the connective tissues. Okay. So for the connective tissues, you have different um, types, as mentioned a while ago in the diagram. So first, you have their loose connective tissue. So they underlie most epithelia and they provide elastic support and they store fluid. So example, um, you could see the loose connective tissue somewhere in your heart. And then we have now dense irregular connective tissue. So they are deep in the skin and around the intestine and kidney capsule. And again, they basically share the same function. They provide support and protection. Okay, so they also bind parts together. Okay, so next you have the dense regular connective tissue that are found on your tendons and ligaments, and they are stretchable to allow movement. Okay, so we also have the cartilage and the bone. So the difference of the two is that your cartilage um, doesn't have. Um, calcium or they doesn't have the structures found in the bone but they provide um the framework of our ears the nose and airways and they cover the ends of the bones okay so the cartilage um supports soft tissues um it is like a cushion that reduces friction at joints okay so the bone tissues on the other hand they protect the soft tissues they function with movement and they are actually responsible for the production of your blood cells and they also store minerals okay now we also have have your adipose tissue or simply your fat. So they are found under the skin and around the heart and kidneys and they store energy-rich lipids and it provides insulation for the body. And last, you have your blood. Okay, so blood is actually a fluid connective tissue with the fluid matrix or the plasma and other cellular components. Okay, so in your module, you could actually find now the different types of the blood cells, but basically you have the RBCs or the red blood cells or also known as your erythrocytes, your white blood cells or the leukocytes, and uh, you also have the plasma as another component of your blood. Okay, so they transport, um, they transport substances, they function in body defenses and help maintain the temperature. Okay, now last, we have the different types of the nerve cells. We have the sensory neurons, the relay or the intermediate neurons, and you have your motor neurons, okay? So the sensory neurons are responsible for receiving the signal, while the relay is responsible for passing on the signal, while the motor would be the actor, okay? Actor of the signal of the, the chemical or the, uh, or the chemical or the electrical impulse sent from your um, senses. Okay, so basically those are the different types of your um, cells from different tissues, both from the animals and from your 
plants. So I hope you learned something from this short video classifying now your plant tissues and your animal tissues.